Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and you can see today I'm going to be talking about unit webs and a unit web is basically an overview of a conceptual unit or a concept based unit. So if you're interested in this topic then please keep on watching. Okay, so I'm running my four week online concept based mathematics course at the moment. It's for pre-K to 12 educators um, and I have some wonderful educators from around the world. My next cohort will be in August so I'll put details uh, in the comment section below if you're interested in having a look at what we cover in the concept based um, mathematics course. So um, one of the elements that we actually cover in the course is to do with unit webs and a lot of questions always come up about unit webs so I'm just going to go through some of the important elements here and what the purpose of a unit web is. So we're going to start off with the why. So you can see that I'm going to go through a couple of examples first and uh, continue to talk about the why. So let's have a look at this particular example. I'm just going to move my picture down here. Um, the purpose of a unit web is really to give us an overview of the entire unit and it's using the backwards by design or understanding by design framework where we look at the end goals of what we want our students to understand and take away from the unit of study and we plan backwards from that. So let's have a look at a primary example. This is called Matt's Crazy Cousins and um, you can see that there are a couple of strands or different categories around this web and that reflects the teaching order. So you'd be teaching one, two and three in that order. Um, there is one strand down here that you notice which is making connections and that is one of the mathematical process strands which I'll talk about later but the mathematical process strand is actually integrated throughout the whole unit so you're going to be explicitly teaching making connections throughout the whole unit. Now let's just see what um, this unit web has. So we have an overarching generalization and that is fractions, decimals and percentages show different ways of representing the same amount. And that big overarching idea, which could be called a central idea or a statement of inquiry, um, really gives the unit breadth of understanding. Now, how do we ensure that there's depth of understanding in the entire unit? Well, that's what these blue boxes here are for. So they're your topical generalizations that actually drive the learning experiences that you're going to design. So these are the conceptual understandings that you want students to take away. So you can see here, SUT stands for students understand that. So students understand that the part to whole relationship in fractions and decimals may represent more than an object and can represent measurements or sets beyond the whole number. And you can see exactly what the learning experiences look like if you read that statement. Now what I love about this unit is that it shows the interconnectedness of the different types of number and looking at base number systems with data and chance. So looking at the statistics and probability. And I think that when we look at different types of number in the context of uh, probability and handling data, it really helps our students to see the interconnectedness of mathematics. So we really shouldn't be teaching mathematics topics in isolated, discrete um, strands, but there should be an interconnectedness. Okay. So let's have a look at another example. We're going to go to a secondary one now. So this one is called Linear Functions and Circle Geometry, which is such a boring title. So most of my titles are really boring. Notice how the other title was Matt's Crazy Cousins, which is a lot more enticing. And because the actual title is something that you share with your students, you want to come up with something a little more enticing. So the one mathematical process that is chosen here to be explicitly taught is creating representations. And so this is going to be integrated throughout the whole unit. Um, in this unit, the uh, teachers start off with properties and looking at the ratio of circumference to diameter in all circles, the idea of a locus as well, um, and summing the limit of sectors 
um, of a rectangle which actually formulates areas of circles. So you can see it's kind of about circle geometry, but then notice how there's a connection with linear functions. And so if we actually graph c equals pi d, we know that the rate of change is going to be pi, and it actually forms a linear function. So the interconnectedness here is to help students really understand the connections between a linear function and that relationship of the ratio of circumference to diameter. And then this can lead to modeling. And then we can look at some linear functions um, which actually model real life situations. Okay, so I said that I was going to talk about those mathematical processes. So I'm just going to jump over here to the six mathematical processes. Um, I basically looked at a lot of different mathematical practices or processes from around the world in different systems. So I looked at the Common Core uh, state standards. I looked at the mathematical um, practices from Australia. I looked at the IB. I looked at Hong Kong. I looked at the um, Virginia state standards as well in the US. And I basically distilled all of the practices or processes that were mentioned down into these six. So this is what was common amongst the world in terms of their mathematical practices. So everybody talked about problem solving, making connections, reasoning and proof, investigating or inquiring, communication and creating representations as important mathematical processes. Um, and so we do all of these processes all the time when we're learning mathematics, but it's quite important that we explicitly teach one or two of them in a unit so that students are explicitly taught how to create a representation, for example. And if it was the fractions and decimals um, and percentages unit, then if you choose creating representations, maybe you want to be teaching students um, the different line graphs or you want them to um, understand how to use the area model. Um, so you're going to choose one of these six or two uh, to explicitly teach. And they're very similar to the IB ATLs, the Approaches to Learning Skills, where we want to encourage the explicit teaching of the Approaches to Learning Skills in the IB. And we want to highlight maybe one or two of those Approaches to Learning Skills for each unit, even though we probably do all of them all the time. So I hope you found this useful. Uh, this was an overview of unit webs and um, there is a lot of brainstorming that actually goes on. It's a collaborative process. Um, I want to leave you just with one important idea that those generalizations in blue here, we do not share them with our students. They are for planning. They drive the learning experiences that we give to our students in the classroom. But I like to use the analogy that we don't want to rob our students of what the present is before they open it. Or in other words, another great analogy that my colleague at Hong Kong U shared with me is that we want to give the trailer to the movie and we don't want to give the spoiler. So we want the students to be able to uncover these important conceptual understandings through the learning experiences that we actually design. So thank you once again, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.